Hi, everyone. Welcome to the second Bruin Women in Business meeting for spring quarter. We hope you all are doing well and staying safe. As explained in our first video, this quarter we will be delivering pre-recorded presentations to account for students in different time zones or those who may have different commitments. In addition to these videos, we are still available via email or phone for some more personal questions given these unprecedented circumstances. So to get started, today is all about industry skills. Last week, Hannah and Lauren presented on alternative summer plans for those who may have lost their internship or various opportunities during this time or are still searching for something to do for the summer. So I highly recommend you check out that video if you are interested. This week, I, along with the Career Development Committee, will be discussing industry skills and resources. The Career Development Committee at BWIB consists of myself, Stephanie, Lizzie, Maya, and Breland. We will be switching off throughout the presentation, going over different industries. This will be an overview of the skills needed in each industry and how to hone these skills over time. The first industry we will be diving into is consulting. At its core, consulting is in the business of buying brains. Consultants are problem solvers. They are in the practice of solving organizations' business problems, devising strategies, and improving the financial and operational health of the company, providing external business advice. Clients need consultants to basically help them get from point A to point B. And in doing so, certain skills are imperative to thrive in consulting. Since consulting is a client-facing occupation, good communication skills are very important. When presenting to the client or writing comprehensive reports, you must communicate your technical insight and analysis to your audience clearly and effectively. It is important that you are able to streamline your ideas into simple insights the client can follow. This is highly tested in case interviews while recruiting. Companies are looking for those who organize their thoughts and present their conclusions logically and clearly. Critical thinking is also very significant as the consultant's work hinges on analyzing data and drawing smart conclusions to solve complex business problems. Consultants are fast and independent thinkers who know how to approach a problem efficiently and creatively. Creativity is also a big quality that propels success in this industry. Companies desperately crave creative minds that have unique perspectives and diligently come up with the best solution for the client. Another big portion of consulting is teamwork. Often consultants work in teams, bouncing ideas off one another and collaborating to craft the best solution. Companies look for someone who can work autonomously and successfully contribute to a team. They look for a leader who takes initiative as well as a team player. The average hours per week consultants work is between 50 to 60 hours. Consulting is also a traveling job and requires frequent plane rides across the country to work on various projects. Therefore, consulting does require excellent time management skills. Consultants may work on multiple projects at a time and are constantly analyzing data. It is important to effectively delegate tasks and adapt to new situations quickly and efficiently. With time and dedicated practice, these skills are not impossible to master. Consulting is definitely not boxed under an economics major or a business major. Consultants are ultimately problem solvers who know how to analyze a problem and fix it. That being said, I have provided several resources for you guys. Under resources, I have provided some links that are helpful if you decide to pursue consulting. Case in Point is a holy grail book for upcoming consultants that details how to tackle a case interview with various frameworks. Victor Chang also has an email subscription and tons of resources you can check out about how to nail case interviews and get that job offer. I have also linked a Coursera Excel specialization for those of you who wish to hone in your Excel skills. Excel is also a very important skill to learn when dealing with data as a consultant. Prep Lounge is also another resource to help with navigating case interviews. Consulting is truly a lifestyle that demands critical analysis and the passion for change. Ultimately, consulting is definitely an industry that is very forgiving in terms of technical skills. Companies are not looking for a specific major or extensive economic knowledge. 
It really boils down to one's ability to critically analyze a business problem and clearly propose an effective solution, which takes time and practice, but is definitely doable to succeed in this industry. The next industry we are looking at is banking and finance. So unlike consulting, banking and finance is a very technical industry. Banking and finance surrounds managing money, analyzing financial trends, studying investments, and evaluating and mending a company's financials. As this industry heavily relies on not only understanding, but also analyzing financials, it is a good idea to have at least a foundational understanding of financial statements. So income statements, balance sheets, cash flow statements, and how they relate with one another, different forms of valuation, and etc. Learning how to look at a company's financial statement and understand it is the foundation of a career in this industry. This is especially important for banking recruitment. These skills may take a while for someone to master, but if you have the intellectual curiosity to learn more and get better, it is more than possible. With this knowledge, one must have strong quantitative and analytical skills to interpret these data. Excel is a pretty universal skill across all careers in this industry. Like I've previously stated, those in banking and finance are working with data and numbers every day. So familiarizing yourself with working with financial data would be extremely helpful. In addition to technical skills, having the ability to communicate your financial advice is imperative for drafting reports and speaking to clients. Banking and finance is a very jargon-filled industry, so clear communication, attention to detail, and strong work ethic are all pillars of a career in banking and finance. The average hours per week is 80 to 100 hours, so the work is extensive and constant, which requires good management and leadership skills. In a team, knowing when and how to delegate is crucial to producing good outcomes. Therefore, high commitment is also a given for this type of work. While banking and finance seem like an intimidating field of work at first, it does have a high pay scale, imparts valuable financial skills, and builds relationships with the clients and companies you serve. If you have a quantitative acumen, like playing with numbers, enjoy analyzing the economy, data, banking and financing would be ideal for someone like that. This industry can be jarring and challenging, but if you have the passion for this work and do have an interest in it, succeeding is not impossible. That being said, I have listed some resources such as Breaking Into Wall Street, which is a YouTube channel that basically serves as an investment banking Bible and provides viewers with basic foundational financial skills. Wall Street Prep is also a good resource that builds basic skills in banking and the financial field. More locally, the Student Accounting Society is also a great resource on campus for networking, workshops, and other events if you're interested in accounting specifically. But we will be going over accounting more specifically later on in the video. It is also a great idea to subscribe to daily business email newsletters, such as Morning Brew, they send you emails every day with a short blurb of the economy and current events, and it really is an amazing way to stay informed about the financial status of the world around us and further your financial acumen needed in this industry. Banking and finance may seem like a difficult industry to break into, but with extensive practice, networking, and the curiosity to learn more and get better, it is definitely an industry that you should not count out when looking at careers to go into. Hi everyone, my name is Brylin, and today I'll be talking about accounting and technology, the basics of these careers, and kind of what they have to offer. So first going into accounting, which Stephanie touched on a little bit before in banking and finance as kind of the skills that you would need to know for these careers. Um, accounting is the measurement, processing, and communication of financial information about corporations. So basically you'll be focusing on the cash flows through these companies, as well as all of their assets, their liabilities, everything like this. So What's extremely crucial in accounting is your ability to focus on a specific task for a long period of time because you'll be sitting and working through the nitty gritty of kind of all of the finances for this corporation and everything that goes into that. So 
On top of your ability to focus on a specific task, you'll also need to be very organized. You'll have to have good time management because obviously there's a lot of financial information that goes through a single corporation in every single day. So making sure that you are on time with everything is extremely important. Your credibility and integrity are also extremely important as everything needs to be correct financially. And of course, you'll need to have a lot of industry knowledge because a lot of accounting is very knowledge based. You're going to need to know what you're talking about, what you're working with, and have the, having the foundation for that with all these skills is absolutely imperative. So going into the pay scale, the lower end, the higher end ranges from about 38000 to about 71000 with the median sitting in around 51000 Although you'll be expected to work much less per week than, say, somebody in banking and finance, where you'll only be working about 45 hours per week. A great place to start would be looking into accounting softwares. QuickBooks and Xero are two very popular accounting softwares used within the accounting industry, and using these resources, you can kind of get an introduction to and an understanding of these softwares for familiarizing yourself with these softwares ahead of time. Now I'll be talking about technology, which is basically companies that focus on research, development, and or distribution of technologically based goods and services. So really what sets technology apart from the rest is that technology can be in any firm anywhere. So as a result, the pay scale can be completely different depending on which industry you go into because it can be within engineering, it could be within marketing, and it can be within finance. Everything involves some level of tech. So the important skills to have for technology uh, is the ability to adapt to a fast-paced environment. A lot of technology-based companies are startups nowadays, and your ability to adapt to changing trends on top of this, you'll also need to know a lot of technical skills like coding and data analysis, for which we have a few resources here at the bottom that I'll go over in a second. And product management and collaboration are huge within technology, so making sure that you know how to work well with others and that you have a lot of experience in it is very important. The average hours per week spent within technology is, again, like the pay scale very different depending on which industry you decide to enter and whether or not you decide to go directly into technology or finance or marketing, what have you. There's going to be a large range of hours spent per week depending on this. So going into resources, we have quite a few here for you guys to check out if you want to practice and brush up on your coding, which will be extremely useful now that we're stuck inside anyway. It gives you something to do, something to practice. Um, it's a great way to spend your time, especially if you now don't have a an internship for this quarter. So these are great places to start if you want to start working on practicing coding. And a deep dive into technology will be held on week 8 on May 20th. So if you want any more information on technology, this is a great place to start because they'll be going into these resources a little bit more and just giving you a better idea as to what technology is as a career. Okay, so next is marketing, which is basically about figuring out how to get people interested in a product or service. This can include, but definitely isn't limited to advertising, researching who the product or service should be targeting, and how to cater the product or service to that desired group. So marketing usually requires a lot of interpersonal interaction. So if you think you would enjoy getting out of the office and working with others, um, and you aren't really too drawn to a typical nine to five desk job, this could be a really great option for you to consider. Uh, the median pay scale is about 45,000 a year, but it has a wide range as you can see. Uh, this field could also be a really good fit if a decent work-life balance is important to you um, because unlike a lot of areas of business, the average number of hours per week is a pretty standard 40, which is really nice. Um, also, I just want to point out that 
Um, marketing can be so versatile. You can choose to do so many things um, with it, whether it's more kind of graphic design based or you want to focus on the sales side of the industry or the tech side. Uh, there's definitely a home for you somewhere in marketing if it's something that you're drawn to. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. Okay, next slide. Now, if you've gone through this entire presentation so far and not one of these industries is really piquing your interest, please do not worry. Do not stress out because there are so many different business careers out there. Um, so don't think that business isn't for you if you haven't seen one that you kind of um, like so far that's jumping out at you. Uh, for example, entrepreneurship. Um, this is such a broad category and can be a place for anyone interested in starting any kind of company or being, even being a part of that process. So if this interests you, you might want to check out the entrepreneurship minor offered at UCLA, uh, which basically runs you through that process and allows you to see kind of what goes on behind the scenes um, of a startup company. So that's really awesome. Human resources, sales, leadership development, hospitality are also really broad categories that have so many versatile opportunities within each one of them. So there's really so many options. Um, some advice for going into any of these industries is to network, network, network. This will make finding internships so much easier and these experiences are what are or what is going to really allow you to kind of dive in and figure out what you like, what you don't, what's for you, um, and kind of what you want to stray away from. And please, most importantly of all, do not stress out if you don't find something you love, your first or your second or even your third internship, um, because that's really what this experience is all about. That's what college is for. Um, so yeah, that's all for me. And I think I'll turn it over to Lizzie to talk a little bit about the resources available to all of you as fellow Bruins. Thanks for listening. Hi everyone, this is Lizzie and I'm going to finish out this presentation by talking about some of the resources offered through UCLA and how they've changed this quarter to be virtual. So I'll start by talking about some of the listservs and then move to the resources offered through the Career Center and Handshake and then an overview of some of the main business related clubs and orgs on campus. So starting just with the listservs, and by listservs, we just mean a mailing list, like email blasts. The first and I think most helpful and most relevant one is the U Undergraduate Business Society or UBS listserv. UBS is the main business org on campus, and they send weekly emails, which provide a good overview of the main business-related events happening on campus, as well as the workshops that they are hosting. The UCLA Career Center also has a listserv, which we'll get into more detail later about some of the events that they host. Partnership UCLA, or the Alumni Career Programs, also has an email newsletter. Partnership UCLA helps current UCLA students build connections with UCLA alumni. They offer numerous programs, including the Social Enterprise Academy and the Bruin Development Academy, amongst others. The Econ Department counselors also have a listserv, which is not just relevant for econ majors, but can also be very informative for anyone just interested in pursuing a career in business in general. It's also helpful to follow the Facebook pages of different business clubs and kind of get an idea about what they're promoting. Obviously, this is a lot of different emails, and you'll probably find that there's a lot of overlap between them all, but it's not a bad idea to start by subscribing to them, and then as you figure out what you like and what works for you, you can always unsubscribe. So the UCLA Career Center, for those of you who don't know where it is, it's across the street from the Luskin. And typically, they offer all of these resources in person. However, this quarter, they've moved everything to be virtual. So they're offering career advising, advising through Zoom, which is a 30-minute consultation with a career counselor and can be used for mock interviews or help with a personal statement or even just to learn about different career possibilities. And you can make appointments through Handshake Monday and they're available Monday through Friday. They also are doing virtual drop-in sessions. So it's a 15-minute drop-in session. You don't need to make an appointment in advance. 
and that can be used for resume and cover letter reviews or even just to ask questions about job or inter- internship search strategies. And they've made all of their events and workshops as usual, but just held virtually. So this includes resume and cover letter 101, virtual job search, networking and interviewing strategies, and they even sometimes partner with clubs on campus and offer workshops like case interviews and that type of thing. It also doesn't help to doesn't hurt to look at the career center websites from different schools such as USC or Stanford or Wharton just to see different opportunities that might be offered that they post on their websites that might not be found on ours. So Handshake is used by the UCLA Career Center, and it is a platform that connects students with internships, jobs, and career opportunities. Currently, there's more than 9,000 jobs and 3,000 internships posted, which is really overwhelming. So a good way to start is to fill out your profile, and the more you provide about yourself, the more relevant the opportunities and resources that Handshake will show you will be. Um, And it's also a good idea to kind of experiment with the different filters in the search feature. So filtering by location and industry will help you find results that are more relevant to what you're looking for. On Handshake, you can also set up notification preferences so that you receive emails about opportunities in your area of interest. So you can flag different companies and Handshake will send you an email when that company is coming to campus or if they've posted a new listing on Handshake. Handshake is the, if an employer is coming and looking for UCLA students, they'll often go through the Career Center, which then posts things through Handshake. Handshake can also be used to make appointments, as I mentioned previously, with the um, undergraduate career educators for those one-on-one advising appointments. It's also how you RSVP for any professional development workshops, programs, and events, whether that's workshops held by the Career Center or when a company comes to campus. There's also a large number of business-related clubs and orgs on campus. This list is by no means comprehensive, but we've divided it up by the previous main industries that we talked about prior. And this is kind of a good starting place. I recommend that if you see any clubs that might be interesting to you, that you check out their website and figure out when they're recruiting, what the recruiting process looks like, and you might even recognize some familiar faces from BWIB who might be able to answer some of your more specific questions about that specific club or org. So that's all we have for you today, but we hope that that provided a good overview of numerous main industries and some UCLA resources. Um, But as always, if you have any questions, I know we're not here in person, but please feel free to email the BWIB email and we'll make sure to get back to you. Thank you.